had a teacher in school who told the class that the reason why your fingers got all wrinkly when wet was because of osmosis. That the cells on your fingertips were actually taking in so much water that they were bursting and leaving behind lots of little divots. Now, I knew almost immediately that something about this didn't feel right. If that was the case, why didn't your whole body get wrinkly? And why were only specific cells in these lines taking in so much water that they were bursting? And why did your fingers fill back in again when they were dried off? There were lots of things about this that didn't make sense to me. Later on in my scientific career, I heard a slightly different osmosis theory. Not that your cells were bursting, but just that the cells in your fingertips were taking in so much water that they were swelling up and causing those wrinkles. But I've been so burned by this osmosis and wrinkly fingers theory in the past that I still took this explanation with a grain of salt. It didn't really make sense. Again, why wasn't my whole body going wrinkly and why were only lines of cells puffing up to make these wrinkles? Why wasn't everything just swelling up? And it just didn't really sit right. But for years, I couldn't really find a good explanation as to why your fingers went all wrinkly when wet, and it was just one of those scientific questions that stuck with me for almost a decade. But a year or so ago, I started to get an answer. A paper came out in 2011 that asked the question, are wet-induced, wrinkled fingers primate rain treads? The paper first talks about the fact that for about a century, scientists have known that if you cut the sympathetic nerve headed to your fingertips, they won't wrinkle in water. This means that the osmosis theory is really kind of out. If it were true, your fingertips should wrinkle whether or not there's nerve innervation. The two really have nothing to do with one another. This means that there's something even cooler going on and possibly a really cool adaptive purpose for your wrinkled fingers. And because your fingers only wrinkle when wet, the scientists proposed that this adaptation might be helpful in wet conditions. Here they proposed the rain tread hypothesis. Think for a second about the tires on a car. They're not perfectly smooth, they have lots of treads in them. And this means that in wet conditions, there are lots of channels for water to be quickly moved out from underneath the tire. Similar water channels can be found in nature. In river basins, lots of small streams come together to form one large river. However, if you have water draining downhill from a place of high elevation to low elevation, you will often see a series of disconnected divergent channels. The scientists proposed that if our wrinkled fingers were actually working as rain treads, they should look a lot more like this second kind of channeling, where water goes from one source and spreads out to lots of them. That way, if you pushed your finger down on a wet surface, instead of the water pooling and getting stuck underneath, it would be spread out from under it and dispersed out from underneath your fingertip. The scientists looked at 28 different fingertips and found that they did indeed look like these downhill drainage networks. Plus one for the rain tread hypothesis. The researchers also noted that it takes about five minutes for your fingers to wrinkle. Not so fast that just reaching into some water is gonna cause them to go all pruny, but fast enough that if you are completing a wet task, your fingers can change to help you adapt to the condition. This paper was super exciting, but it still left me with one really big question. The researchers didn't actually test to see whether or not these wrinkled fingers did help you manipulate wet objects. I wanted to see grasp tests using wrinkled versus non-wrinkled fingers, and they put this in their future experiments, but I wanted to know now. And I was so curious about this that I actually spent a lot of time thinking about how you might be able to do it. And I thought that maybe you could use something like an ice cube which would have a wet surface on it. And you could take wrinkled fingers and non-wrinkled fingers and you could pick up those ice cubes and you could somehow judge how long it took you to pick them up or how long you could hold on to them for. It wasn't the perfect experiment but I wasn't so far off and last week somebody answered my question. On January 8th a paper was published entitled Water-Induced Finger Wrinkles Improve Handling of Wet Objects. Fantastic. The researchers had participants move marbles and fishing weights from one container into another with their thumb and forefinger, and they did so in wet conditions and in dry conditions and with wrinkled fingers and with non-wrinkled fingers. They timed how long it took the participants to complete each task with each set of variables. They found that participants could transfer wet objects with wrinkled fingers faster than they could with non-wrinkled fingers, and that wrinkled fingers had no effect on the transfer time of dry objects. It's brilliant, and I can't say any better than they did, that this finding shows a clear advantage of having wrinkled fingers when manipulating submerged objects, but not dry objects. It's, it's just perfect. Of course, we are still left with some questions. We know, for example, that at least one other species of primate exhibits this sort of finger wrinkling, but we don't know how many others do it. And why not have wrinkled fingers all the time? Well, they might be more subject to damage or less sensitive to touch. And does this mean that the rain tread hypothesis is correct? Maybe it is, or maybe finger wrinkles help by changing skin flexibility or adhesion. There are always further questions and future experiments. And that is why you need to go forth and do science.